uh, something along that line um, that as the population ages mm -hmm. and many older people don't get around that well that uh, when my uh, step parents bought their new house the entire subdivision was made uh, just naturally wheelchair accessible. Mm -hmm. There were no thresholds, there were no steps, there was nothing in any of the houses. Mm -hmm. Going from the garage into the uh, little hallway entryway, there was no step, no threshold. They built the entire area that way. And everything selling, could be built that way. Oh, absolutely. It didn't cost anything more. They just took a little different architecture and a little different engineering to create it that way to begin with. Mm -hmm. But this is another, a whole other dimension of this discussion of openness and innocence and Mm -hmm. um, not so much naivete, but th but the openness mm -hmm. to allow uh, that I while I don't have friends now, I'm, I'm speaking hypothetically. Mm -hmm. uh, if a person does not currently have friends who are quadriplegic, they or their friends or their loved ones may become at some point mm -hmm. quadriplegic. Mm -hmm. They will not have to strain the relationship at that point mm -hmm. if they have chosen mm -hmm. circumstances and living situations mm -hmm. that allow uh, for that kind of accessibility. They can include Stephen Hawking <laughs> in their social circle mm -hmm. if the opportunity ever presents itself. <laughs> yes. If they live in a house that has steps and is not wheelchair accessible, mm -hmm. One thing you can promise yourself is he's never coming to visit. That's right. You're not going to get those it's people. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And this brings to mind something else, uh, uh, an idea I came up with many years ago, and I call it the uh, seventh grader solution. Okay. I believe, and maybe this is naive on my part, but I believe that most of the problems, if not all the problems of the world, that we could hand it off to a randomly selected group of 27th graders. Okay. And they would come up with the absolute most mind-blowing, workable, uh, creative solutions to whatever the problem is. Okay. Now, of course, then you would have to have somebody else bring in the practical, the cost, and those kind of things, because the seventh graders aren't going to be aware of that. No, they're just going to imagine. That's right. And so they still have enough of that, that naivete, enough of that, that innocence, that they will see beyond the roadblocks that the 30-year-old or, you know, the 50-year-old has lost touch with long ago. Yeah, we, we get used to thinking in certain parameters, kind of like in the uh, book Walden, where Thoreau mm -hmm. writes about the path between his house and the pond, mm -hmm. that in short order he'd worn a path, and, mm -hmm. and he makes some comment about how often we, we fall into the same routines and after a while have worn a path to where we don't walk anywhere else. Yeah. And we so never step out of the rut. And we lose the experience. And you know, back to uh, psychotherapy, it's the same sort of thing. You know, people have been uh, pursuing the same solutions within their mind and brain structure for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And when they finally realize that this isn't working and this isn't going to work like this, then what the heck do I do? They have that path worn so deeply, you know, it's a trench now, mm -hmm. and they can't even peek up over the edge to imagine what might be out there. Mm -hmm. And in that context or in that environment, then hypnosis can very quickly can very quickly help them at least look up over the trench and say, oh my gosh, there's a huge... Because hypnosis yeah. takes down the walls and lets everything be visible. Very quickly, very quickly. You know, the, the question, and that's why I would say only do it with a, with a competent therapist, is when all the walls come down, are you able to handle it? <laughs> and you're right. Or, or does it become overwhelming? <laughs> and many therapists can't, and they shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this, um, oh, full-time, uh, 22 years. And, and you have specific training as a psychotherapist. Yes, yes I do. And so when those walls come down, I think I'm prepared for it. I've never been uh, overwhelmed or blindsided by it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes it's challenging, and sometimes it's ugly, and sometimes it is scary. Uh, and still, we do it. We only have a couple minutes left mm, of the show. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if there's any, what I suppose that the common phrases. Are there any final statements you'd like to make? But it's um, <laughs> perhaps a common, uh, perhaps some summary statement about how viewers can make the experience of openness and innocence a positive thing. <laughs> uh, a, a caution, a, a warning flag to watch for, um, a way of doing it that helps keep things on track. Well, I think that people won't perceive it that way necessarily. 
because opening up to naivete again and that innocence again, mm -hmm. I think it's very uncomfortable for most adults. Now, from our conversations, I think you probably maintain a closer connection with that than most people do. Okay. And it may not uh, be quite the disconnect that uh, it is for most people. I see a sort of a, a cross-section of humanity come into my office.